this what you see is a car alternator not just any car alternator it's a bmw alternator with the current value of up to 180 amperes that is why it is so special and how i know that i'll show you on its label so guys here as you can see that it's the value alternator and it's also printed bmw 14v meaning volts and 180a meaning amps so it is 14 volts 180 amperes now guys this alternator stopped working so to be sure we will have to look into it well guys this one seems like a perfect fit yeah it's an 8 mm okay got this piece out here is you can see this saying b positive which is the main output positive terminal of this alternator well the brushes seem fine i will give you a close up that's the rotor slip rings and if you look closely you will see the brushes okay so guys it's time to do some winding check you see this this and this these three terminals these are the wires coming out from this winding copper winding which is the armature winding okay so let's check the resistances oh the resistance is quite low it is around 0.2 ohms that's pretty low let's go for the other one yeah this one also 0.2 ohms now comes the far ones again 0.2 ohms so yeah the alternator is working fine for the armature at least now that's left is the rectifier well guys now comes the part of finding the fault in the alternator if there is or if there is not so first we are going to do the self excitation testing Well guys I'm also going to measure the current of this high current motor 1.5 hp let's see how much it draws okay so yeah let's start the setup you can see that the setup has started and if we measure the current that this motor is drawing okay it is drawing a uh, 0.19 amps at around 70 volt that's pretty efficient well guys this time i'm going to connect the multimeter terminals to check if it generates some voltage and if it is getting self excited since entire body of the alternator is a negative so i'm going to connect it to the body of course okay so turning it on Well guys here as you can see that it is generating around 0.6 volts DC so all i have to do is increase the rpm of the alternator and check if it can self excite you can see that the voltage on the multimeter is increasing pretty high volts almost 1 volt close to 1 volt that is almost 1 volt yeah it should get self excited now i don't know why isn't it getting self excited Let's go a little higher and see what happens. That is 1.7 volts. Still nothing. Turning it off. Well guys, finally I will have to take this part out. You see 1 2 3 these three screws. Let's open them. let's see what the problem is uh, nice and easy okay cool 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 well the brushes as you can see are pretty good not a single problem well this what you see these are the slip rings for the rotor inside or you can say the field winding let's check the field winding if it is working or not so guys for testing the field winding i'm going to use this 15 volts 3 ampere supply and let's see if there is a spark when i connect these to the slip rings or touch it to the slip rings that would be more appropriate yeah there is spark no doubt 
so uh, uh the field winding is fine let's make sure that the mag there is no short circuit by ensuring the availability of good magnetic field uh, and uh, the field coil inside is uh, really inductive and as soon as i remove one terminal it is going to give a good flyback so there is still hope for it to be tested let's do it like this okay hmm. yeah good magnetic field is being formed i can feel it when i rotate uh, the rotor and yeah, the magnetic field is pretty good which means the field winding is perfect and the slip rings are also fine so there is no fault here well uh, let's open this case type thing and see what is inside maybe the fault is in here Uh, you see here it seems like uh, the electric cable bus power system and this entire uh, circuit is filled with some kind of gel you see so guys it seems like this three phase rectifier is fine but there is some problem with this voltage regulator uh, maybe the diodes uh, within this have stopped working or something like that so anyways uh, there's always a solution or a shortcut to situation like these which is this so let's remove it this is going to be the direct positive terminal for this alternator okay almost out okay finally as you can see this one is the positive terminal for the brush so i will have to give a solder over here and extend a wire or something like that and uh, about this uh, let's just cover it as it was before okay yeah so guys here i'm going to use this uh, red wire to add to the new brush uh, slot or connection that we just opened that's the positive one That's done pretty good. So placing everything back as it was before. So you get a screwdriver thin as possible and uh, then push the brushes so that it creates space for the slip rings. Okay. Uh, first one done now the second one yeah second one also done now all we gotta do is tighten up the screws okay. yeah it's running smooth so guys for confirmation let's just check the resistance of the field winding or the rotor winding for which uh, the positive brush that is feeding the field winding is this one and the negative is the body of the alternator yeah the resistance is uh, 9.4 ohms so the coil is fine once again the magnetic field check positive will be given to the red terminal and negative is the body you see and now we are in business so let's connect it like this and yeah pretty good magnetic field has been established and i remove it it's free to run okay look closely to the shaft and it has become hard you see it is asking for a lot of power to operate and when i remove it then it will run really smooth so guys the final check will be completed by finding out if it is generating electricity or not so yeah this is a uh, 55 watts bike headlamp bulb 12 volts 55 watts so one terminal here i'm connecting to the positive okay done and uh, this side will be connected as i said to any part of the alternator since the body of the alternator is negative yeah so that is also done now for feeding the router or field winding again the negative will be connected to the body of the alternator done and positive to the brush okay done you see and guys here i'm feeding the field winding or the rotor winding with uh, uh, the laptop charger 15 volts output okay go wow well this is working pretty good again and this time a little harder nice 
So guys, here as you can see that I've turned off the lights once again. Okay. Go. In this video, I'm going to review this two-stroke 49cc drift bike engine that I got from Banggood's. Link will be in the description if you want to buy. So guys, here you understand the mechanism. This piece is attached directly to the engine and the engine rotates it at a very high RPM because of which these, this one, this one and this one, these three pieces are free to move. And when it rotates at a high RPM, the circumference or the diameter of this circle increases. It's this much at present, but it increases like this at very high RPM. And these ends of this mechanism gets in contact with this metal piece and this piece gets tightened towards its boundaries and they get somehow they get jammed and when this piece rotates it gets in contact with this one and it also rotates this piece and this is how it works and these springs are very tight you see like if I try to move it yeah it is very tight so imagine how the how high the rpm would be to create such a powerful centrifugal force to make it move outwards expand outwards
Well, guys, here as you can see that uh, this is the petrol tank in which I have mixed around 50 ml of petrol and 2 ml of uh, like engine oil, two stroke engine oil. You can also use four stroke, but it is preferable to use two stroke engine oil because this is a two stroke engine. I didn't have uh, like uh, the four stroke engine oil. Uh, sorry the two stroke engine oil so I have also used uh, the four stroke engine oil okay and uh, I have used uh, this cushion type uh, base for this engine because it is going to vibrate uh, and uh, this is going to absorb that shock so uh, let's start it and see how it works You see, working pretty good. Now guys, uh, the race is not at full because of which this piece is moving really slow even though the engine is running very fast. So I'm going to increase the race. And guys, uh, this piece you see this one is the accelerator like increasing the speed okay so i'm going to tight it up the more we tight it up in the more is the acceleration and speed and this time you should see this part move really fast okay okay so yeah let's do it and you can always stop the engine by touching this piece here for a little uh, for some time and then it then it stops okay so starting it once again You see how fast it worked? Brilliant! In this video, I'm going to make a high current 300 amps diode. This can, of course, is a part of this project. Here, as you can see, that there are 50 diodes in this strip of MIC with a single diode rating of 400 volts max and 6 amperes continuous maximum and one single diode can carry a high current pulse of up to 400 amperes obviously for a very short duration but yes it can here as you can see that i'm cleaning the ends of the positive and negative terminals of each and every diode that is because the ends were stuck to the paper with a glue which might have some insulation and create a problem during soldering and guys this cleaning is also going to remove the oxide covering on the terminals so after completing the cleaning process which i did with the sandpaper let's proceed further now guys here as you can see that i am gluing the diodes together to create one set of 25 diodes and in total i have 50 diodes so there is going to be another set a second set which is also going to contain 25 diodes so two sets with 25 diodes each with the current carrying capability of each set being 
150 amps and peak of 10,000 amps. Now comes the connection part. With a peak value of up to 20,000 amperes and an avalanche breakdown voltage of up to 400 volts. So guys, for doing the connections, first we have to bend the terminals of all the diodes to bring them together to the center terminal for the diode in the center so that it forms a pyramid and then solder them properly without leaving out a single terminal so that all diodes are in contact for completing our target 300 ampere diode set and guys note that the pyramid side is the positive side of the diode for both the sets so guys here as you can see that the soldering part has completed the positive terminals of all the diodes are under a short circuit now the negative part is left and the wiring of course that is also left so let's move on to that part and guys now comes the part of shorting all the negative terminals of the diodes i mean two sets of the diodes together negative to negative and this shorted part will create one overall negative terminal okay so uh, what i will do is i will use little soldering on the outer section and on the inner section i will place bare copper wire to connect the terminals and i have to connect each and every single terminal So guys the soldering for all the diode terminals is fully complete except for the three terminals in the middle you see you see the two in the middle those two are not connected similarly there is another piece yeah i think yeah now you can see that's the second yeah that's the third okay so leaving out the three all of them have been connected perfectly with the help of the soldering iron but don't you worry because i am going to connect those three as well not with the soldering iron but with a copper wire and then i'm going to use that copper wire to connect all the terminals together by winding it around these terminals well guys here as you can see that i have perfectly completed the shorting part of the common negative terminals of all the diodes now let's place this hot glue okay so let's cover it with this uh, insulation tape because it can create contact with the aluminum boundary and thus create a short circuit So guys this terminal that you see is the final overall output negative terminal of this diode. Now I have to think about the positive and uh, this is one positive and this is the other positive and they have to be joined together as one with this wire. Well guys it's time to place this high amp diode inside this can okay Well guys here as you can see that I have covered this part with tape to protect any short circuit condition because there is going to be high current which might even burn the can because it is aluminium and this is the cap I'm also going to place some insulated tape on this on the sides of this okay yeah so the short circuit protection has been completed all I have to do is place it in well guys our high current diode is fully complete now it's time for us to test it so guys first I'm going to check the forward bias voltage okay well this multimeter can also check the diodes you see the diode sign okay so red is positive and positive is uh, the black side and negative is for the silver side or gray side okay and here as you can see that it's showing 0.458 volts forward voltage drop okay and in the reverse you can see that it is showing open circuit in the reverse bias condition 
okay so guys link for this product will be in the description if you want to buy it just in case and guys a few days back you saw me make this variable 24 volts power supply 24 to 48 or 49 volts dc so i'm going to test this high current diode with this power supply so guys this side of the diode is positive and this terminal from the power supply is also positive and red indicates positive so let's connect it okay positive terminal has been connected and guys this is as you can see a 24 volts dc 500 watts output with a current reading of around 27 amperes dc motor that i have for e-bikes well i'm going to test this diode performance with this motor first okay so yeah this one black one is negative okay turn on the positive will be connected to this terminal at present i haven't given any power supply to the uh, to this power supply circuit board so let's do that well guys the power supply has been turned on okay so turn turning the knob yeah around 80 percent of the power okay. You see, You see how great the power supply is working. Well guys, this is the forward bias voltage, okay. Let's reverse it. To ensure that there is no short circuit inside. And as you can see, that in the reverse bias condition, it is not working. The diode is working just as any other diode. And one more thing guys that the high current diodes are very expensive if you have to buy and this one went really cheap. Now guys I'm going to run this pump. This is a DC shunt motor and it is going to uh, like this power supply is going to feed this pump to both field winding and the rotor winding because it does not has any permanent magnets and that is why it is going to draw huge current well guys i'm going to measure the voltage that this power supply is producing which as you can see is around 37 volts so obviously this motor is going to draw even more current because of more voltage being fed to it yeah one terminal is connected now the other one okay you see so much spark so the diode is working pretty good guys now let's move on to the final starter motor bike starter motor that i have you all know okay so that's the final before ending the video <laughs> See, it's almost a short circuit. So guys, yes indeed, this diode is working really good. And it is also super good if you want to use it in car alternators because the car alternators generate huge current at less voltage and this diode of course can withstand it.